Hello and welcome to Terra Nil. Terra Nil is a reverse city builder from the developer Free Lives. In this game, we convert a planet that is a barren wasteland into an ecological paradise, and then even clean up after ourselves. I've been wanting to take a look at this game for a while. In addition to the city builder aspect, it's also somewhat of a puzzle, so it really caught my eye. In this future episode, I'm going to play through the demo, so let's get started. I want to point out one thing that's, uh, there are a couple things that I'm really, um, uh, uh, excited about in this, uh, level, or in this game. Uh, first off, you can control the max zoom level, which is a nice thing to have because, uh, so many games seem to stop you, uh, and I'm sure it's for the exact reasons here, a simulation reason, but... I want to be able to zoom out further than most games allow, so that's good. And then the other thing is, the volume here is at nearly max, and yet the music is fairly soft. So finally, a game that doesn't blast your ears with sound. Uh, there was something else that I played somewhat recently that actually was set fairly high as well, but uh, it's fairly uncommon for games. Usually I'm cranking the master volume down to 50% or so, and then the music on top of that down to 50% or even lower. Um, so this is, this is much appreciated. All right, let's apply the, that change because I wanted to just make the zoom level change on camera. Uh, so we're going to just go ahead and play the demo, as I mentioned before, and it doesn't take very long. So this would just be a single episode. And, uh, once the game comes out for real, then we'll come back and take a further look at it at that point. So let's go ahead and play the demo. Welcome to Terra Nil. Your goal is to rejuvenate this wasteland by covering the landscape in greenery. Okay. So, we start out with a rather large map of um, wasteland. Well, sure. And um, if you're starting the game completely from scratch, and I'm, I'm not, uh, you start out with about a quarter of this, and the game kind of guides you through a little bit more than what I'm going to do here. Um, as the sort of a tutorial mode and then you get the full map that you can then convert so uh we have we have some highlands kind of thing here we have some rocks here uh we have regular kind of grasslandy area or not grassland area i guess just a flatland area here and then this this is a riverbed here this darker area and then again some more highlands here and then a couple of burned out trees and rocks and I'm not sure if those are significant or they're just decoration, but some some logs and some rocks and whatnot here. But these higher up rocks we actually can use. So the first thing you want to do is place a, a wind turbine here on top of a rock. You can only place it on top of these rocks um, and it provides power to nearby buildings. And so we're going to start with that and I think I'm just going to put it right there. Once you've provided power to the nearby area, uh, you you spent a few of your uh, green points here, 75 green points, and you gain a little bit of electricity. Uh, actually, gain as much electricity as you need for the coverage area. And by the way, over here also, there's a climate map. And our goal here is to get this X right there in the bullseye. And right now we're down here in horrible low temperatures and very low humidity. Yeah. So the next piece to place is a toxin scrubber. Toxin scrubber takes power and uh, wasteland and co converts it into, once it's nearby wasteland and ash tiles of toxins, converting them into fertile soil. So we're going to place this down um, probably here as close to the corner as I can get it. We'll have to do some tweaking in order to get all the way into the corner, but that'll be fine. And then I want to be able to put this down uh, maybe right there. Yeah, right there. And we're just going to kind of want to keep spreading these around this area that we have placed the power down in. I'm going to keep going in this direction, I think. And they are overlapping a little. Um, depending on the situation, you may want to overlap them more or less than others. Uh, like this one, I'm going to put as far over there as I can. And then this one, I'm going to put right there on the tip of that. And I could also put one up here. And maybe that's a good idea. Uh, maybe it's not. I don't think it is actually, because I can also put a wind turbine here and then reach these over uh, right there and right there. And we don't have to absolutely get every little piece, um, as we'll see as we proceed. Uh, 
So that's kind of one piece of the game. The next piece of the game is the irrigator. This creates greenery by watering nearby clean soil. Greenery provides incomes and can be rotated. So this, um, while it costs green points, uh, in uh, this is your currency, I guess, uh, it, it requires soil and provides back some green points as well as green ground. So let's go ahead and see about placing this. There are a few different rotations available for this. Uh, there's all th four L shapes. And then there's both straight lines. So we could do straight lines like this, or we could do some of the L shapes like this. Maybe we do that one, I think. And so that gained me a bunch of points back. We were at 500. We spent 50, and now we're at 672. So you want to kind of time it with yourself here a little bit to um, to make sure that you're placing these down in a wise way so that you can maximize the amount of uh, green points you're getting. You can see there are 117. As long as you're getting back more than you're spending, you're doing fairly well, I think. Uh, let's keep placing down, though, some turbines. I think we can put another one here. And we can get a little bit more coverage out this way. And then we can continue with more turbines over in this direction. And uh, don't worry too much about uh, parts of the ground not being covered. Um, it'll, 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 be, it'll be much better later. <laughs> uh, so let's just keep placing some of these. And every once in a while switching gears to the... Uh, let's put down here. Switching gears to the uh, the the irrigator so that we can recover some of our green points we're spending here. I'll put one like way over here kind of thing. And then up here some. And you can see also there's a graph of how much of the land we've covered in greenery. And we don't have to get to 200%, we just have to get it fairly high. I don't remember what the number is, though. Now let's do... Hmm, let's do this. Even though I'm leaving a little bit on the table down there. Um, which I could cover by this, but maybe we'll get it a different way. Oh, I did leave one spot there and one spot there open, but that's fine. Let's see, I want to turn this one to get this way, maybe. Yeah. And then we can hit this one like this, I think. I kind of like the L shapes the best. Um, but, you know, your mileage may, may vary. Uh, pick pick the one that, that fits you the best, of course. And I'm bumping right up against it there. Uh, we'll go ahead and do that. And then we can do this one also. Then we decide to keep keep proceeding around here on the map. Uh, far corner of that one, and maybe this one as well. Nope, we can't get any closer than that. Do that, and then I'll do this one over here. And the other part of this game is it's super chill. There's no enemies. There's no timer. There's no fretting. <laughs> there's You kind of just place it, and if you don't like it, it's fine. Um... You'll figure it out later. It's not a big deal. So maybe I'm not doing the best coverage here, but sometimes, you know, you want to just just kind of play the game and uh, kind of get it finished. Let's do one more down there, even though it isn't strictly necessary. Um, so it's kind of up to you how you want to play this game, which is which is always good in a game. Uh, to give you some options. Let's do... Uh, let's keep it like that. We can get more coverage. Oops, we can get more coverage this way. Uh, that'll be good right there. Right, so let's start back down here, maybe. And... Yeah, I'm always a fan of games that give you a, some options on... You know, how you want to play it. Let's do that. And then, yeah, we need to make, make up some of these points. Let's do a straight one this time. We'll do it right there. We can do an L shape this way, perhaps. Can't get all the way down there. That's okay. And then another L shape like this, maybe. Which 
just doing some thinking there. This one can go there. We've successfully repopulated the wasteland. Oh, so we do need to get to 100%, but it's not 100% of the world. So you successfully repopulated this wasteland with plant life. Now increase the biodiversity of the ecosystem by restoring three biomes. Press the number two tab below to access the new buildings. So it just jumped to the second tab here. And we'll look at these in a moment. I want to quickly finish some of this and then uh, show you a couple other of the phase one features that we didn't actually need to use. Um water pumps you can put down say I want to put it here and I think I do uh, this will automatically fill the riverbed with water up to a certain distance away from it so we'll need to put a couple more of these down like this and it has to be put on greenery I think or it has to be put on on river spaces. Okay. We'll put one here also. And that might just fill in the rest of the water. Uh, it doesn't go uphill though, so we'll have to figure that. We'll have to put one up there too. But uh, there's also an excavator. And I don't want to place one of these right now because they caught, they're large and they're more expensive. And if we continue through the demo, you'll see in a moment that there is a way to um, get a smaller and cheaper one of these. Um, and the calcifier is, so let's say we have an area where we have a river and the river ends, um, but there are still, um, there's still some dead area and this will be more useful with the excavator, but there's still some dead area where we haven't quite, uh, recuperated the land like this. So we're going to have to, um, we're going to use the excavator to dig new rivers and then use the calcifier to put up new rocks so that we can build a, is it what they call as rocks? Yeah, rocks. Uh, to put up another um, turbine in order to be able to power additional areas. So we'll do that after we look at phase two. And by the way, you can always undo your last move. Only one move, but you can undo your last move. So here we have a research center. It requires a power source and it reduces the cost of scrubbers, pumps, calcifiers, and excavators. It makes excavators smaller. So we already placed uh, calcifiers and excavators. Uh, I guess we could have saved money on pumps. We should have done that, I guess. Oops, uh, that's fine. Uh, let's put this somewhere where we're not gonna need to excavate, maybe up here on this hill or something. I think that'll be fine. And that'll give us uh, some cheaper and smaller excavators. So now, now they have an excavator we can use. I wanna put this down here, I think. And it goes through and cuts cuts a new river into the land. And you can kind of keep doing this too. You can you can place it, you can rotate it around, and you can place it kind of wherever you want. And so I think I want to do it like this. I don't actually don't think it made it cheaper. And then when you can do a calcifier and place rocks where you want them. And maybe I'll do one more excavation going this way right into that open area which is kind of what I want so that I can put down some rocks here and then I can put down uh, oops uh, wind turbine here and now I can recover this corner of the land uh, for my own purposes here and notice the excavators destroyed some of the land so you kind of have to play the game a little bit defensively, I guess, um, and and recover some of the things that you've done to the land. So it's kind of an interesting, uh, to me at least, an interesting sort of concept of, okay, the land isn't always going to be perfect, and uh, you need to keep an eye on how you're dealing with things. Um, can I do, like, one around here? And the, the other weird part is... Uh, we have this one here, but it's not still repairing the area around it. It's only repairing the uh, It's only repaired the area that was that was damaged when you put the thing down So you may want to and I didn't do this But I may have wanted to put these down a little bit differently so that we could recuperate as much of that land as possible 
And can I do something like this? And maybe I'll leave that one alone for now. So, uh, now that we've reco recuperated most of the land, we could also do the same over here with this area, and maybe we should. Uh, but we'd have to figure out a way to do the excavation properly. Uh, so, not right now. Um, and we're, you can see our little X here is getting closer into the range. So let's look at the second tab. We only looked at one item, which is the research center. The next piece is a hydroponium. We put it on top of one of the um, irrigators, and it creates wetlands. So let's. this looks like maybe a good wetland area. Put it down here, and it has to be kind of near a river, and it converts the, the land around it into a wetland. And that, as you can see, gave us a little bit of a boost here to this uh, this pie chart to the wetlands section of the pie chart. We need to get all three of these 200%. So we need a little bit more wetland. That might be a good place for a wetland. Mostly because I can pick it. Uh, this one here would be good. And there. And I guess maybe this one. And we're done with wetlands now. Uh, the next thing is a beehive. This requires you to put it on a tree. It provides more of the uh, more of the green points. What do they call the resources? I guess yeah. If I don't know, it feels like a too generic of a name to me. But and it provides finbos, which are basically uh, a flower. Um, so let's see. There's a tree right there, which wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, let's do that. And so that plants flowery stuff in the area, which is really cool. Uh, and then we can put one down here. And one up here. And it won't automatically go over top of where you already placed wetlands, and vice versa as well. And then uh, the next thing we have here is an arboretum. The arboretum requires... Um, oops. Come here. Thank you. Requires ashy nutrients and a building husk. Now, well, how do we get those? Uh, and they give resources in forest. Uh, here's a solar amplifier. In a powered area, it takes sunlight... Strengthens the sunlight and area around it, allowing for the lighting of fires. And then we have the desiccator, which takes sunlight, finbos, and a solar amplifier, and provides ashy nutrients and fire. <laughs> so, uh, we want to make sure we get in kind of in a flowery area. Uh, let's see, what's the best one here? This one might be... Yeah, let's do this one over here. So we need to put down one of these uh, solar, sun pan solar panel things. Uh, solar amplifiers, and then we need to put down a desiccator, and uh, that's going to start a fire and burn a lot of land around it, turning it into an ashy uh, kind of a wasteland. There are these uh, bits of the buildings here that burned, and those buildings we can put down on top of, or one, this one, one of these arboretums on top of that building husk like this. and build a forest that way. And it looks like we're gonna to need to do this a little bit more. We need to also then replace some of these, uh, some of these uh, flowers. But the good thing is, since you're putting up trees, you can go to one near the edge and put up enough flowers to make a difference. So let's do the same thing solar-wise over here. I think I have to put, yeah, okay. I have to put down one of these in the, kind of in the neighborhood, there's a little range to it. And I think we're going to go further over here, though. And then I can put this, like, here. And we'll let that burn. And it did a decent burn. And now we need to have one of these. I'll put one here on this corner, there, and one over here. And then we can... Oh, I should do... Oh, it's burning a lot. Okay. It burnt a lot more than I thought it was going to burn. That's fine. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, let's keep doing this. It burned everything. That's a good place. Down here, too. And let's see. Let's do some more of these beehives, like here. 
So we've already accomplished the, the wetland. We accomplished the forest now. And now we just need to make enough of these flowers in this area or another area. Uh, maybe here. Yeah, the problem is we have now too much grassland. <laughs> and maybe I should do an excavator down here. Bring some, uh, bring some water to us. I think if I do uh, this one. That'll work. And then I can do this one. And I can put up a calcifier here. I thought. Do I not have enough water coming up the hill there? Undo that. Uh, how about right here then? Is that because there's a forest here? If so, that's a bummer. Okay, well, let's see what else we can do. Uh, to try and get enough flowers. Oh, here's a tree. With biodiversity restored, we can begin the process of cleaning up. You need to construct an airship of recycled materials. You've also been given access to advanced weather technology. So, right now, our temperature is good. Or, um, but our humidity is not high enough. So we need to increase our humidity. So we have humidity pylons here. Uses water and wetland to increase humidity, but, waste, but wasteland decreases it. And then this temperature pylon it boosts, uses solar amplifiers to boost ambient temperature. So we want to use some of these now to boost. It's a six, that's pretty good. And you can see now the little X is moving in. And we can do this one here, it's only 2% though. Zero, three percent. That's not bad. Two percent, five percent. That's a good one. We'll do the two percent as well. We got our temperature good though. That's that's a good shot. And down here, one, two. Okay, so we're gonna have to get some more, uh, some more rocks. I wonder if I can do a another one of these. Getting a little low on, on the funds here, too. And carve that out that way. And can, then can I calcify here? Yes, I can. Okay, this is what I needed to do, kind of. That can go there. And then we can do this. And then we can do some of this. Uh, let's see... Do that, I guess. Can I get a good spot here? I think maybe I'll do the horizontal. Hmm. Not great, but it's something. There's a two. Almost there. Uh, I may need to do some more calcification someplace else. Um, this might be a good spot. Do I need power down here first? I'm also running out of money. That could be a problem. 8%, that'll help. That might actually be too much. Ah, here it comes. Here comes the rain. Excellent. So now we need to build an airship and then a recycling drone. Uh, an airship needs to be built in the or adjacent to the water. Uh, this might be a good spot since it's basically a wasteland anyway. Ah, so now it's raining. Great. And then the recycling drone travels along rivers to collect recycled material from loading docks. Uh, the silo removes other buildings and stores a portion of their cost. The loading dock loads recycled material from the surrounding buildings and silos on a recycling drone. 
And then the pound lock allows recycling drones to travel up and down waterfalls. So we need a recycling drone. We have to put it here next to the airship. And then we need to have some silos to pull in the, uh, to, to basically to recycle the buildings we've built. Let's start up here, and I want to make sure I get a good coverage area here. Uh, I think that's good. And then we can do a loading dock that, as long as it picks up the, um, the, uh, what are these called? The silos. That's good to go. I have to do this one over here. Oh, I needed to put the loading dock down after. Oopsie. Okay, that's fine. So maybe I don't even need... Looks like I don't even need one of the, uh... Silos, necessarily. Let's do a silo here. I think I can do this, which is kind of an interesting move. Uh, if you put down another silo, it'll actually recycle that silo as well. I learned that when I was doing my practice round. Uh, and then let's put this over here, so that it picks up that last thing there. I also need one of these here. Pick up that, and this. So you can kind of chain your recycling of your items back to where you can get at them by using this, creatively using the silos. Now I need to be able to get to that silo, so I need one of these uh, pound locks. It just goes right here on anywhere there's a waterfall. And then we can put down one of those, and then our little uh, raft will be able to, to go up upstream to pick that up. Watch it go. Watch it go through the lock. And then it can magically go back downstream. No problem. I think. Now it says it's stuck. I guess it's not magic. So we'll have to recycle that back down. No problem. We'll do that later. Uh, this needs to go... Here-ish? It's hard to see those there. And then we can wiggle it this way a little bit. And I want to take these this way. And I can't get all of those in unless I use a pound lock. Maybe I could do something like this to sneak it down and then pick it up with the uh, other thing. And then we'll just uh, do this over here, too, to pick up that that lock. Okay, and then we need to do this part over here. Uh, can I get... Uh, yes, I kind of can. Right there. We'll just kind of keep walking it this way, maybe, or over here. And make sure I pick up everything that's over in this crazy area, though. Hard to see. There. There. And now it's telling me what's left. Okay, good. Thank you. Thing. There. And then can I do one of these? Right there. Now, what did I miss? And there are little animals too, little deer of some kind. All right, now we're done. We have collected everything. Everything that's left on the map is now being collected and our drone goes into our airship. And then we can launch our airship. The drone itself doesn't get recycled, though. Which is interesting. You can see these last bits here are getting fixed up, too. Automatically. And that's just because we've, we've restored the planet sufficiently that it can restore itself now. So it'll kind of catch all the last of these corners and uh, 
clean it, clean it up the rest of the way, which is really nice. Wasteland reclaimed. Continue. So this is just one tiny little patch on a disaster area of a world, but the animation here is showing us that what we did will recover that whole that whole island on its own. All right, and that is the end of the demo. So I don't know how they're going to make this into a story mode or a kind of a campaign or how they're going to handle it, but I'm looking forward to however they do decide to handle it. And I hope you are too. So thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.